you have a you know, wood stove heater, you get the thing burning really hot, you got a lot of charcoal in there, and then you choke it down, you no longer have a lot of, you no longer let in a lot, enough oxygen to fully combust um, in the, the charcoal bed. So you'll get a little combustion, and then it reverts into reduction and starts producing CO and hydrogen. Hydrogen isn't much an issue for us, but CO is, is a bit of an issue for us. So this is how you get CO poisoning in a, uh, in a wood stove situation. CO, the CO poisoning in a wood stove situation is founded on the reduction reaction. Make sense? Okay. Um, so, um, so this is assuming you have charcoal to start with. Oh, okay, so the re reduction reaction, we run out of oxygen. Um, reduction reactions start, those will propagate until we, it, it's pull, we're going to be pulling energy in the form of heat um, out, of, out of those gases, uh, running the reduction reactions, generating carbon monoxide and hydrogen, and those will continue downward until we reach the temperature where those reactions stop. Okay? You need a minimum te temperature to run those reactions. And um, with enough residence time, they'll end at about 550. Um, in terms of 550C, in terms of what we can reasonably run in a, you know, a real-time situation, a reactor, they, their usable bottom end is about 700C. Okay? So reduction will continue endothermically, pulling energy out of the gas until it, it pulls it down to about 700C, and then reduction stops. And in this case, that's going up to the subtract. Gas. Correct. It's going up and then out. So what you would get out of here is essentially 700C gas. Okay? So you've wasted a lot of energy. So what you do in a, in a biomass situation is you're now going to use that energy to run pyrolysis and drying. This situation is assuming your pyrolysis and drying is done. Okay. So in a biomass updraft gasifier, we're putting raw biomass in now. Okay. And so we're now adding the pyrolysis and drying zone, which we didn't have before. So similarly, air comes in the bottom. Um, we burn the charcoal that's at the base. Um, that CO2 water vapor. Yes? Do you mind showing the fly? Like going there and going. Oh. Um, Maybe somebody else can do that for you. Anybody have a laser pointer? Here we go. Oh, okay. okay. So, air comes in the base here. We burn in the, in the charcoal. Um, oxygen. So that process propagates upward, consuming the oxygen at the point at which the oxygen runs out. Um, it reverses, we move into a reduction. Uh, the CO2 and water vapor that was creating the combustion is now reduced to CO and hydrogen. That continues down to the temperature limit, bottom temperature limit over where the reduction reactions <coughs> happen. And then from that point, we start pyrolysizing the dry material that's coming in from above. Okay? Remember, when we require heat to run pyrolysis, we we'll fragment the biomass through heat. Pyrolysis will happen really at any temperature, um, or any maximum temperature, but it does have a minimum temperature. Pyrolysis starts at about 200 to 20 C. So pyrolysis will, will um, consume the energy um, that's left over after reduction to fragment the biomass, um, and reducing the temperature in the process down to about 220 C. So the transition between this pyrolysis and drying zone, again, is going to be right about 220 C. <coughs> And then from there upward, that energy is, is going to be used for drying the biomass. Okay? So we assume we have water vapor in this biomass. We need heat to, to vaporize that, uh, that water out of the biomass. So you see here, in an updraft gasifier, um, the zones are set up in a progressively descending order. All of the energy that we create in the original combustion is mined in serial steps by um, the next zones going upward. So this is what you would have even in a campfire. If you, if you have a campfire going and you throw a bunch of biomass on it, you'll similarly get all of these zones operating up. Now they're going to be messy because you have other air coming in, but all of those zones or all of those processes are going on every time you throw a log on the fire. What's your typical gas temperature here? Is it like 100, 200 C? Um, well, in front, if you have a lot of wet biomass, it's going to come out at 100 C. And if you fully mined all of the heat for drying purposes, it would be a good seat. But you're not always going to fully mine it, so it's going to come out at 150, 200, something like that. Okay? And, and so, what, are the, what are the temperatures between the other layers? Like between the combustion and the 
reduction and then reduction by relative? Well, it'll often in these drawings it'll say reduction is 900 to 700 C, but realistically it's a continuum. I mean, the, the division between right. combustion and reduction is a temperature, it's, when, it's where you run out of oxygen. And you start running out of that oxygen, um, you know, in combustion. So, if you're burning, if you're burning charcoal, it's going to be burning at uh, about 1300 C. So, but the second you burn that, you have CO2, water vapor, and charcoal at 1300 C. So the reduction starts at 1300 C. Okay. So, and then it just kind of con continues at varying rates as it's getting as it's getting colder, um, and then stops. It's really usable range at about 700 C. In this case, the gas is very organic. From the system, there are water, H2, CO, CO2, and a bunch of gas, different gas. Correct. Correct. And then, so this is the problem. An updraft gasifier, as you see, is thermally very efficient. It has all the zones lined up. All the, all the heat you make in the beginning, you mine back to interesting things chemically. Um, but actually, what was interesting chemically is what you had right after the reduction zone here. You had the hydrogen and carbon monoxide that you want for running some sort of clean burning application. Um, problem is the pyrolysis and drying is after that. So the pyrolysis is going to produce this big mixed cocktail of um, tar gases, and the drying is going to produce steam. So the, the, the um, high quality gas you had after the reduction zone, you've now uh, mixed with these very low quality problematic gases um, after the pyrolysis and drying zone. So what comes out is very dirty, okay? but it's cool. Okay? So we've used this feature when we designed cigarettes to get both the combination of a cool gas as well as a highly toxic gas that will kill you. Okay? <laughs> but the cigarette is an updraft gasifier that you put in your mouth and suck. Um, so when we're concerned about the safety of gasifiers, we should actually note that we have them installed globally um, <laughs> without any government interventions or exotic um, financing uh, vehicles, um, and they proved to be a highly popular product. Um, so we're hoping we can do similar and use the gas for more reasonable things. Um, so a cigarette is, you know, it's a it's a stick of it's a stick of biomass. Okay, you light the end of it, and after you have it going for a while, you know, you have a bit of charcoal on the end, charcoal ember glow, and you suck on it. You're burning the charcoal at the end. That burning proper, that oxidation propagates inward until you run out of oxygen, you make CO2 and water vapor, um, and heat, and that heat um, you know, heats, heats the charcoal ahead, uh, reduce, uh, you know, reduces over that charcoal, creates some um, CO and water vapor, um, and the remaining heat is pulled out to pyrolysize the, the remaining the, the, the tobacco ahead, which further reduces the temperature but makes a bunch of nasty tars. Um, and then beyond there, you continue to pull heat out in the drying, okay? Which by the end gets it down to about 150 C, which is much better than just putting a charcoal gas fire in your mouth and sucking or it to be 700 C, which would hurt, okay? <laughs> so you don't want to do that. So, but the problem is now you have all that steam and tar in it, which is why you know, your lungs turn black, okay? And why you get this, the black stuff in the, in the, in the filter. Good question. Well, compare that to a vaporizer, which is created to smoke another type of product. Yeah, a vaporizer is a much better way to, to deliver nicotine or other substances. Um, uh, yeah, the, um, the gasification mode of delivering nicotine um, has been uh, somewhat non-optimal. So, but it's, it's very instructive for understanding what a gas fire does. Okay? So the challenge, if you want to use this for energy, is to mix up these zones in a different manner, such that we can get we can get the gas off right here after the reduction zone. Okay, that's the gas we want. So that's what's typically done in a, in a historic downdraft gasifier design. Okay, the zones are now reorganized. We bring the air. The sim okay, so we simply have a closed vessel. Um, we have a top that can open that you put the biomass in. We're now going to pull gas off of the bottom. Okay, air comes in the middle. We burn a com combination of the pyrolysis gas and charcoal here in the combustion zone. Uh, that heat, CO2, and water vapor propagates downward, runs the reduction reactions um, at the base of the reactor, and the CO and hydrogen 
goes straight out without touching the pyrolysis or drying zone. Pyrolysis in this operates um, passively above the combustion zone. So heat is radiating upward as well as some of the gases are, are, are circulating upward via convection. And that heat, pyrolysis, the biomass, you get a similar temperature gradient from hot air through progressively cool. And at some point you'll get a transition from the pyrolysis zone to drying at whatever, however far you've succeeded in having the, the temperature propagate upward. Did Ember, did the, did the updraft come along first in history and then Ember improved it to this? Yeah, I don't know. Ember didn't do the first downdraft gasifier. It's a very, it was a very particular form of it. I actually don't know where the, the first claimed organ, zone so organization like this. Somebody figured out that instead of it going all the way up to like split like this, what you're saying. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you look at the history of gas fire design, there, there's, there's hundreds if not thousands of ways of, of, re, of reorganizing, do, reorganizing this. I mean, um, and Besides just being the zones in the correct order, there's all sorts of other issues around it. So um, this is a very, very flexible process. And if you look through the patent archives and the early stages of gasification, I mean, there's, it's an unbelievable um, eruption of engineering activity. And like the early stages of the patent process, we're right around all of our combustion-based steam, gasification, um, you know, steel milling stuff. So it's just it's completely full those areas. So unlike the last one, you have to pressurize the air and this one might work. You can either pressurize the air or you can pull the gas. So you typically pull the gas. Okay. If you once you start pressurizing the air, you have the problem if you have any leaks it comes out. Whereas if you're pulling the gas, the leaks just go in and you get a little bit of oxygen and it cause that big a deal. Okay? So um, so as you can see here, though we've reorganized this chemically such that we we Ideally, we're burning our tar gas in here, um, creating CO2, water vapor, and heat. That reduces over the charcoal, and then the good gas comes out the end here. Um, unfortunately, that gas is now pretty hot. It's 700 C. And we've now stacked the pyrolysis and drying zones on top of the combustion zone, which is where we're really trying to do all of our tar cracking. So while we've fixed this thing chemically, thermally, we've created a, a, a liability. So we're now sucking energy out of our combustion zone to run pyrolysis and drying. And as you'll see here in a few slides in, that's what we've been solving with the toddy reactor, is, is changing these, or trying to remove the pyrolysis and drying loads from the combustion zone. So on a standard downdraft, why it's so difficult to keep the high temperatures is because um, the pyrolysis and drying are parasitic on the combustion zone. The pyrolysis is always, to an approximation, going to be the same. But the drying varies greatly depending on how much water you have in it. So this is why gasifiers are so sensitive to moisture content. Because all of the, the moisture that is in that, that material, at some point in here, is going to vaporize out and go down through the combustion zone. Okay, So that is going to be a load that the combustion zone has to deal with. And you can very easily overwhelm the amount of energy you have in the combustion zone to get to the needed temperatures. And if you don't get to the needed temperatures, you don't crack the tars, and the tars go through. Okay? So the, the challenge in designing these is to get the geometry correct in this restricted area in the middle with the correct way in which the air is entering, such that you fully fill that combustion zone with tar cracking ad adequate heats. Remember, we have much more tar gas than we can actually burn. So we have to create some sort of constriction where all of the pyrolysis gas from above is going through adequately high temperatures to break apart um, and come out as clean gases, not as the tar. So creating the situations inside that restriction whereby you fully fill that with a, a hot load um, is rather challenging. Okay? And it's further challenged by the fact that you're doing that in charcoal. Remember, we have two things that can burn here out of pyrolysis. Both the tar gas and the char can burn. Okay? Once, so if you have both char gas and, and char in this mixed restriction, you will preferentially burn the gases because just by the, uh, a gas to, to air mixture gets much more reaction sites than into any gas to solid mixture, okay, just by raw surface area available and mixing potential. But you will burn some of the charcoal, okay. That exact ratio there 